Little Red Riding Hood from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm. There was once a sweet little girl who had gained the love of everyone, even those who had only seen her once. She had an old grandmother who knew not how to do enough for her. She loved her so much. Once she sent her little cloak with a red velvet hood, which became her so well that she obtained the name of Little Red Riding Hood. One day her mother said to her, Come, Red Riding Hood, I want you to go and see your grandmother and take her a piece of cake and a bottle of wine, for she is ill and weak, and this will do her good. Make haste and get ready before the weather gets too hot and go straight on your road while you are out, and behave prettily and modestly, and do not run for fear you should fall and break the bottle, and then grandmother would have no wine. And when you pass through the village, do not forget to curtsy and say good morning to everyone who knows you. I will do everything you tell me, mother, said the child, as she wished her goodbye and started for her long walk. It was quite half an hour's walk through the wood from the village to the grandmother's house, and no sooner had Red Riding Hood entered the wood than she met a wolf. Red Riding Hood did not know what a wicked animal he was, and felt not the least afraid of him. "'Good day, Red Riding Hood,' he said. "'Good morning, sir,' replied the little girl with a curtsy. "'Where are you going so early, Red Riding Hood?' he asked. To my grandmother, sir, she replied. Mother baked yesterday, and she has sent me with a piece of cake and a bottle of wine to her, because she's sick, and it will make her stronger and do her good. Where does your grandmother live, Red Riding Hood? About half a mile from here through the woods. Her house stands under three large oak trees near the nut hedges. You would easily know it, said Red Riding Hood. The wolf, when he heard this, thought to himself, This little delicate thing would be a sweet morsel for me at last, and taste nicer than her old grandmother. But she would not satisfy my hunger. I must make a meal of them both. Then he walked quietly on by the side of Red Riding Hood till they came to a part of the wood where a number of flowers grew. See, Red Riding Hood, he said, what pretty flowers are growing here. Would you not like to rest and gather some? And don't you hear how sweetly the birds are singing? You are walking on as steadily as if you were going to school, and it is much more pleasant here in the wood. And then Red Riding Hood looked up and saw the dancing sunbeams shining between the trees and lighting up the beautiful flowers that grew all around her. And she thought, If I were to take my grandmother a fresh nosegay, it would make her so pleased. It is early yet, and I have plenty of time. So she went out of her way into the wood to gather flowers, and when she had picked a few, she saw some more beautiful still at a little distance. So she walked on farther and farther, till she was quite deep in the wood. Meanwhile, the wolf went straight on to the grandmother's house and knocked at the door. Who's there? Little Red Riding Hood, replied the wolf, imitating the voice of the child. Mother has sent me with a piece of cake and a bottle of wine for you. Open the door. Lift up the catch and come in, she replied. I am too weak to get up. So the wolf lifted the latch and the door flew open. Then he rushed in, sprang upon the poor old grandmother, and ate her up. Then he shut the door, dressed himself with the old woman's nightgown and nightcap, and lay down in the bed to wait for Red Riding Hood. After Red Riding Hood had gathered as many flowers as she could carry, she found her way back quickly to the right path, and walked on very fast till she came to her grandmother's house and knocked at the door. "'Who is there?' said the wolf, trying to imitate the grandmother. His voice was so gruff, however, that Little Red Riding Hood would have been frightened, only she thought her grandmother had a cold. 
So she replied, It's Little Red Riding Hood. Mother sent you a piece of cake and a bottle of wine. Lift up the latch and come in, said the wolf. So Red Riding Hood lifted the latch and went in. When she saw her grandmother, as she thought, lying in bed, she went up to her and drew back the curtains, but she could only see the head, for the wolf had pulled the nightcap as far over his face as he could. Good morning, she said, but there was no answer. Then she got on the bed and cried out, Oh, grandmother, what great ears you've got. Better to hear you with, my dear. And what great eyes you've got. The better to see with, my dear. And grandmother, what large hands you have got. The better to hold you, my dear. But grandmother, what great teeth you have got, cried Red Riding Hood, who began to be frightened. The better to eat you cried the wolf, jumping from the bed, and seizing poor Red Riding Hood, he swallowed her up at one mouthful. Now as soon as the wolf had satisfied his hunger, he laid himself in the bed, and snored so loudly that he could be heard outside. A hunter, who was out with his gun, was passing by, and thought to himself, How the old woman snores! I must go in and see what is the matter. Then he stepped into the room, and when he came to the bed, he saw the wolf lying on it. Oh, you old sinner, said the hunter, have I found you at last? I've been seeking you a long time, Mr. Wolf. He was just going to raise his gun when he missed the old grandmother, and thinking that the wolf might have swallowed her, he remembered she might yet be saved. So he would not shoot but taking a pair of scissors, cut open the stomach of the sleeping wolf. How surprised he was to see the smiling face of Red Riding Hood peep out of the first snip. And as he cut further, she sprang out, exclaiming, Oh, I've been so frightened. It was dreadfully dark in the wolf's stomach. Then they helped out the old grandmother, who was also unhurt and living, but she could scarcely breathe. The wolf awoke too late to save his own life. He sank back on the bed and died, and the hunter had his skin. After this they all sat down very contentedly and drank the wine and ate the cake which Red Riding Hood had brought, and then the hunter took the little girl safely home. Ah, she thought, I will never go out of my way to run in the wood again, but my mother has forbidden me. It is related that once after this, when Little Red Riding Hood was going again to her old grandmother with some of the nice things her mother had made, another wolf spoke to her and wanted to entice her out of the way. But Red Riding Hood was on her guard this time and went straight forward without stopping till she came to her grandmother's house. Oh, grandmother, she said, I met a wolf who wished me good day. But he looked at me with such wicked eyes that if I had not been in the street, I'm sure he would have eaten me up. Perhaps he will come here, said the grandmother, so we will lock the door and keep him out. Sure enough, soon after the wolf came to the door and knocked, crying, Open the door, grandmother, I am Red Riding Hood, and I have brought you some cake and wine. But all remained silent, and the door was not opened. Then the sly old thief prowled round the house, and at last sprang on the roof to wait till Red Riding Hood went home in the evening, that he might seize her in the dark and devour her. But the grandmother knew what was in his mind. Now there stood near the house a large stone trough, and she said to the child, Red Riding Hood, I cooked a large sausage yesterday. You can empty the water in which it was cooked into the stone trough. Red Riding Hood drew off the water from the copper and emptied it into the trough until it was quite full, and the smell of the sausage reached the wolf's nose. He sniffed and sniffed and looked down till at last he stretched his neck out to such a distance that he lost his balance and fell from the roof into the great trough full of water and was drowned. Red Riding Hood went home that evening in happiness and safety and 
no one attempted to hurt her on the road. The end.